like Lamar clapping back at Pollard? I, I mean, that's what people do. I mean, it's, it's Twitter, it's social oh. media. I don't, I don't have a problem with it. He is not your traditional uh, hunky-dory quarterback, tall, in the pocket, <laughs> gonna say all the right things, stand at the podium. He is who he is. And so I don't really have a problem with Lamar clapping back at Bernard at all. If he feels that, that way about him and, and he doesn't like what he said about him, go for it. I think when you look at it, though, we're always moving the goalposts on Lamar. Mm. It started off his, his, his college, his last year in college. He should go play another position. That's what many people thought. He said, I'm not doing that. He goes and he gets the starting job at the Baltimore Ravens, taking over for Joe Flacco. He leads him to the playoffs. He loses in the playoffs. Oh, well, he needs to win a playoff game. Eventually, he wins a playoff game. Then now it's, well, he needs to stay healthy. It's like you keep moving the goalposts every single time. And I ask this question to many people all the time. I say, if you go 13-4 and four with a quarterback, mm. and that quarterback accumulates total yardage of, let's use round numbers, 4,000 yards of total offense, but that particular quarterback gives you 4,000 yards in the air, 30 touchdowns in the air. And Lamar Jackson gives you 2,000 on the ground and 2,000 in the air, and he combines for 30 touchdowns, 15 and 15. And he goes 13 and 4, and you make a deep run in the playoffs. But you don't complain about the way the other quarterback performed, but you complain about... Lamar's performance, isn't that the same thing? You got production out of the position. You went as far as you can go. Every single year, he's gotten better and better and better. It's on the Baltimore Ravens to get him the receiver help. You know, mm. Bernard Pollard also talked about no wide receiver wants to play with Lamar Jackson. I would disagree with that. I would say that the Baltimore Ravens have to go out there and acquire whether it's via free agency, trade, or the draft. They haven't done that. They didn't make a strong run at Kristen Kirk, which I wouldn't have spent that type of money on Kristen Kirk either. They didn't make a play for Devontae Adams as trade partners with the Green Bay Packers. They didn't try to sign Odell Beckham. They didn't do those sort of things. So when you look at it, you have to be able to say getting him help, that falls on the Ravens. That's not his ability that scares people away. Lamar, I think, makes everybody around him. He makes all of their jobs easier, and he makes mm -hmm. everyone around him better. And he doesn't get credit for it in the way that other people do, in part, or not in part, because I think it looks a little different than a lot of people are comfortable with. So Lamar Jackson is going to, if you're a receiver, yes, Lamar Jackson is not Patrick Mahomes in the pocket. That's true. But you know what you're going to get all the time? Man coverage. They can't double team yeah. you if Lamar Jackson is that quarterback. So you're going to be going up against man coverage corners all game long, which as a corner I can say is hell. That's not something you want to do is play man start to finish. You also, as a running back, are not going to have nearly as many people trying to take your head off if you're Lamar Jackson. As an offensive lineman, they tell the defensive lineman to, like, control their rush because they don't want to get too far up the field and to give Lamar Jackson running lanes. So when you have a player like that, just because he's not going to sit in the pocket and pick defenses apart, which he fully he's fully capable of. Like, if you watch Lamar Jackson mm -hmm. film from college or even in the NFL, he's not a scrambler nearly as much as he's a design runner. When they call pocket passes, Lamar Jackson stays in the pocket sometimes longer than you would expect him or sometimes longer than you think he should. So he has all the tools. If he did not have his running ability, would he be an MVP, future Hall of Fame quarterback? Of course. Of course not. But if you take one ability away from any of these other quarterbacks, they wouldn't be the same either. Yes, it looks different. Y yes, not everybody is comfortable with it. But even Bernard Pollard, who seems like a Lamar Jackson hater, even he said <laughs> pay him as much as Deshaun Watson and uh, or more because he is worth it. So even if you if you even your haters think you deserve 200 guaranteed, then I think you're doing something pretty damn well. Yeah, I mean, this whole thing stems from the quarterback list that came out earlier this yeah. week, right? Like where you have 
you know, three former MVPs in the top four making the list and Lamar Jackson getting left out. And, you know, Dominique, I know we talked about it the other day on First Take, just some of the tropes that still exist around Lamar Jackson and just a lot of the unconscious and very conscious bias that exists around someone who won the MVP in 2019. But at this point, that's neither here nor there. We know he doesn't get the respect that he deserves. The only respect that matters is getting that big payday, which hopefully for him will happen before the start of this season. I'll say this about Lamar Jackson and the Twitter thing, though, because if you follow me on Twitter, like I, you'll know that I like a good Twitter beef. I don't mind clapping <laughs> back on people who I think are out of pocket. Um, Lamar Jackson is a loyal guy, and he will double down on what he believes in from his you know, respect and support of Kodak mm -hmm. Black to what he thinks about Bernard Pollard. Like, the one thing, though, it's like if you think this guy is – like, I don't want to say the word trash DB because that's not the word that he used. But if you don't think he's that great of a defensive back, why were some of the responses back to him so personal? And it felt like he kind of got under Lamar Jackson's skin. Like, I don't mind the back and forth. I don't know if it'll affect anything with the contract negotiations between Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. It absolutely should not. So, you know, I'm here for it. It's also like July 14th, so there's not a whole ton of other things <laughs> going on. I just hope that the Baltimore Ravens are able – to put this whole thing to bed by giving him a contract before the regular season starts. Otherwise, we're going to have a very, very, very long month of August waiting for yeah, this to happen. Kind of Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.